Today we are here to discuss a most grave injustice, the framing and condemnation of the innocent and the rejection of true courage in favor of a courtly counterfeit. Today we are here to revisit the story of Octavo. When he sees that no one is going to do anything about Hyrule's impending doom, Octavo sets out to defeat Ganon himself. However, the fates tell Octavo that his quest is doomed to fail, because they did not choose him to be a hero. They had already decided that Link and Zelda were their pet heroes, and that no matter what good deeds Octavo did, they were determined to find a secret ill motive so that they could prove that he was nothing more than a power-hungry villain after all. The fact is though that Octavo was not posing in hopes of getting praise. He was not the one saying that he was against Ganon while hiding in a cushy little hut and knitting blankets. He was actually doing something about the problem. He was putting his own life on the line in order to, as he puts it, do what must be done. Octavo had already tried to warn the king, but the king had refused to acknowledge the gravity of the situation. And furthermore, he was dumbfounded when Octavo took matters into his own hands. The king was unable to stand up for himself or to accept that there might have been virtue in actions taken that he himself did not command. The fairy Trill, who was clearly one of the fate's lackeys, blamed Octavo for Link and Zelda's inability to get up on time which makes absolutely no sense. Everyone has to rest, and it's not some purple-skinned conductor's fault if they sleep in. If anyone put Link and Zelda to sleep, it would have been the king who was content to pretend that nothing was amiss in his kingdom, in spite of Octavo's warning that Ganon had appeared. The fates are just as guilty of lulling everyone into a false sense of security by telling them to sit tight and wait for the chosen hero to materialize. When, against all odds, someone did show up, ready to take down Ganon, the fates rejected the man because he was not who they were expecting. They then relentlessly discouraged him until, out of sheer frustration, he ripped the threat of fate and took hold of his own destiny. Outraged, the fates continually nagged him with cliché quips and attacked his character. They were too butthurt that they couldn't control Octavo like they controlled Link and Zelda. And in truth, that's all they really cared about. Being in control, being right, and taking credit for having summoned the heroes. To the fates, the independence and free choice of Octavo was sin against their perfect prophecy. Immediately after the opening cutscene, the fate tells Octavo, My thread! Give that back, you knave! <laughs> Not like it'll change anything. It's no use struggling against your fate. The Fates had already decided Octavo's identity, declaring him as nothing more than a foolish distraction from the quest of the real heroes. They therefore were bent on interpreting everything that Octavo did as nothing more than a manifestation of a deep-seated insanity and lust for power. They continually threw their words of accusations at him like so many poisoned darts. And thanks to the nagging discouragement of the Fates, the most courageous man among them did finally lose his mind and fall in battle. And all because those fates wanted things to work out how they had foretold. They would not accept the possibility that a hero might arise unexpectedly of his own accord, without needing to be commanded about like a pawn. Furthermore, the fates knew that if Octavo did save Hyrule, they would look very foolish for having prophesied that Link and Zelda were the chosen heroes. It was a matter of preserving their own reputation, even if they had to ruin someone else and risk destruction of Hyrule to do it. They were the self-proclaimed weavers of fate, after all, and they weren't about to let some free-thinking rogue taint their spotless reputation. In the end, Octavo's confidence and self-respect was eroded, and he came to agree with the fate's verdict that he was truly incapable of doing good. He then conceded that the fates were more wise than he, which is what they were itching to hear all along. I suppose I feel a deep emotional connection with Octavo because, for years, I was diligently taught that I too was evil and incapable of doing any good on my own. This, of course, is a load of bunk. 
The real evil is the people who don't have the courage to put themselves out there, instead opting to criticize those who do risk their own skin to help others. These cowards use cliches to sound wise and to conceal their own lack of virtue. They don't do their own good deeds either. Instead, they associate themselves with others whose good deeds they wish to take credit for. In our story, the fraudulent fates are the real villains. If they would have been more concerned with simply defeating Ganon rather than being right, they could have helped Octavo to save Hyrule much more quickly than Link or Zelda, and he could have kept his sanity. But the fates would not change their mind because, like the spoiled brats that they were, they just had to have their way. By the end of the story, a moral emerges that goes something like this. If other people, especially those who self-profess to be wise and weave blankets out of their hair, tell you that you are a bad person, then you should give up on doing good and accept that you are, and only ever will be, evil. But this is not so. Each of us has the power to write our own identity and to determine our own destiny. It's a matter of learning to speak up for ourselves, literally. The words of others impact our sense of identity, but so do our own words. Should we have the courage to speak up in defense of what each of us truly desires? This is something that Octavo struggled with. He didn't open up very much about his ambitions because he was already being berated for the little that he did share. Now, clearly, Octavo's lack of social skills did not help him but it is understandable why he failed to speak out about his plans or to ask for help. The fates were only interested in thwarting Octavo and seeing their own favorite children rise to fame. Considering how unloved he was, it's no wonder Octavo wanted to prove himself by taking down Ganon single-handedly. Everyone constantly disapproved of him, and so at a certain point, he stopped caring what others said about him and just did what he believed was right. Octavo did more than Link or Zelda, who were merely following orders. He had the courage to push through the pain of rejection and the endurance to fight for what he believed in to the bitter end. Octavo then chose to humble himself and take responsibility for the self-destructive evil that the fates had worked so hard to brainwash him into believing was his true identity. By doing this, he seemed to confirm their prophecy but anyone with common sense can see that his willingness to change his mind demonstrated that he had far more integrity of character than the fates ever did. The fates never changed their mind. They never had to admit fault. They never had to struggle to prove themselves. They merely sat around and commentated on the daring feats of actual heroes. They were the critic in Roosevelt's Man in the Arena speech, which goes something like this. It is not the critic who counts. Not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly. Yes, Octavo had his flaws, but he was no prattling poser. Not only did he face the challenge of defeating Ganon like the other heroes, but he had to face the discouragement of everyone and battle his own inner demons. In spite of everything, he did his utmost to defeat Ganon, and although he failed, he exhibited greater courage than any hero who followed him.